Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back. Jazakallah khair for waiting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our monthly primetime event. My name is Saima Shah and I am your host on behalf of MCNA and YMJ. We are Muslim children of North America and young Muslim junior and we are a part of ICNA which is Islamic Circle of North America. So we bring you this prime time event every month. Some of you are regulars in this prime time, uh, mashallah. And every month we bring you a new speaker and a, a new hot topic. So our goal is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give our young youth, which is all of you, the knowledge and leadership skills so that you all can be successful inshallah in this world and the next world. So we also have a super cool magazine which I will tell you about at the end of today's program inshallah. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm al-Din, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasain, Ahdina sirat al-Mustaqeem, Sirat al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim, Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim, Wala al-Dalleen, Ameen. So we always in Surah Al-Fatiha ask Allah to show us the right path and through our prime time our knowledgeable speaker helps us to understand how we can walk on this straight path insha'Allah. So today our respected speaker is Brother Habib Qadri. So mashallah he has a long resume but I'll just give you some of his highlights. Uh, he's the principal of the MCC full-time Islamic school which is in Morton Grove, Illinois. Um, he has a bachelor's degree in teaching of history and a master's in school administration. He is currently attending the Har Harvard University Graduate School of Education. He has written mashallah several books for parents and uh, but I think that his most favorite job might be being a father of three kids, mashallah. So today, inshallah, he will give us some great tips on empowerment and how you can be confident Muslims, especially in challenging times like these. So give him your full attention, and then you can also ask questions related to the topic by writing them down. Um, inshallah in the questions box and without further delay uh, brother Habib Qadri the mic is yours Assalamu alaikum Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulil Kareem We want to first uh, thank uh, the opportunity to come and speak to you all uh, I think a few years ago I had the opportunity to speak to uh, many of the young individuals and I want to give us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless these next few minutes, our 30, 45 minutes that we do it for the sake of Allah and Allah inshallah will give us hasanat. So all you young ones right now, if your parents force you to listen to this or you might be like, oh my God, I got to do some homework and you're taking these 30 minutes, I guarantee you right now you are getting Jannah money, good deeds for every few seconds that first because you're doing it for Allah's sake. Inshallah, make your parents happy so you get double the reward. So inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going to kind of quickly go through. So for you young ones, I want you guys to think about this, right? Empowering our youth, right? And so this is kind of a topic they have. But I want you to realize sometimes you're like, oh, here we go. It's always about religion. See, and you might think, why are my parents always worried about us being Muslims? See, I want you guys really quick just to look at this slide. And I'm not going to go through all of it, but there's one part. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Surah Anfal that guess what, your kids are a test. So a lot of us as parents, we get worried because we know that Allah SWT is going to test us with you. Does that mean like, wait a minute, I know some of you guys might be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a mashallah kid, I don't cause any trouble. But Allah SWT reminds us even the greatest of people, the prophets, that Allah SWT even tested the prophets with sometimes their own kids. And Prophet Adam alayhi salam got tested where one son was jealous of another son. Prophet Nuh alayhi salam's son, you know, he was like, for, he's like, come my son, practice the deen, practice the deen. He, sent, he didn't just send him to weekend school or one time, once a week, a lecture. But for three, they say that Prophet Nuh alayhi salam's father, I mean son, was 300 years old when the great flood happened. And Prophet Nuh alayhi salam's kept on making dua until 
all the way when his son goes, Father, go, I'm going to go to the top of the mountain, I'll be fine. And he kept on making dua for his son until Allah said no more. So one thing we learned, parents here, just for the parents also, you, we keep on making dua for our kids every single day. And kids, you can make dua for your deen, for your parents, for your toys, for your video games. You can make dua for uh, 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 things you want to do in the future, what you want to become. So Allah SWT is open and Allah SWT is al-sami, al-basir. He hears and sees everything. So you just ask and Allah SWT will bless us. Then Allah gives us another example for young ones. You might be like, why do we need to empower our youth again? Because Prophet Yusuf, his brothers got jealous of him. So point, should we kill him? Uh, let's throw him in the well and see what happens. So here are some examples, but I want you to realize, oh my God, it's all about religion, religion, religion. So young ones, I want you to think about this. Which dua did the Prophet wasallam say the most? I want you to kind of keep this in mind, that from all the supplications that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and there are a lot of du'as, right? Leaving the house, Bismillah, Tawakkaltullah. Eating your food, Bismillah, Allah, Mubarakim, Subhanallah, Tisafkhulana, Nahaza. There are many du'as for many different things, from eating, drinking, leaving the house, going to the bathroom, Allahumma Azzaqam, and Qubsi, Wal Qabais. Many of your du'as, your parents taught you. But when it was asked by all the du'as in the Quran, even the Rapana du'as, there was one du'a that the Prophet Sallallahu said the most in any other du'a. And this is the same du'a even at Hajj time that the people all announce and recite. It's Rapana, our Lord, Atina, give us, fit dunya in this world, hasanatun, good things, wa fil akhirati, in the hereafter, hasanatun, good things, wa khina adhaab, and save us from the hellfire. So asking for the good in this world and asking for the good in the hereafter is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do. So it is okay to be the best, to be the doctor, to be the engineer, to be the scholar, to be the imam, Mulana, be the imam. Whatever we do, we want to make sure in this world that we are also successful. And we don't just be just do enough. We try to be Ahsan to do the excel, to be the best at it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hey, at the same time, when you want to have all the stuff that you want to be a good basketball player, you want to be a good math student, you want to be a good uh, artist, you want to be a good Lego player, you want to be a good uh, uh, a Ninjago guy, or you want to be whatever video games you might play, it's okay. But remember, at the same time, that same effort that you put in for this worldly life, as long as it's halal to do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you just to say, give me at least 50% of that same effort for the hereafter. Allah is that merciful. Even if you stay three hours playing video games or all these other things, Allah is saying, just give me at least 20 minutes of reading Quran, 20 minutes of, you know, of remembering me throughout the day. There are so many things, and we're going to talk about that later. So this idea of getting support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very important. All right, I'm trying to get some out. Right. Now, why is this important? Because guess what? Our lives, Allah decides when it's our time to go. So just like a school, you have a class after owns in 40 minutes. You might have a quarter after like nine weeks becomes a quarter. Then you might have the finals after us end the semester. Are you might in sports, sometimes the preseason, some people get to be on the preseason team, but they don't get to be on the regular team. The regular season happens, some te teams get to go on later on to go to the playoffs, some teams don't get to, some teams make the playoffs, but they don't make it to the championship. All throughout life, there are certain times that you get to some place, and some people don't get to go. Allah tells us in our life, some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make dua that all of us will live a long, righteous life, not just long life, but a righteous life, some of us, inshallah, Allah will give us to live until 80. Some might be 60. Some might be 50. So whatever it is that we want to make sure Allah gives us that righteous life, but we got to make it to be righteous, we need to empower ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's where we got to make sure some of the things that we do, it is important. The reason why is because there are going to be challenges from the people around you, maybe from media, but also from Iblis. Because Iblis when he was so arrogant, like, I don't need to hear anything. This is why I want you guys to realize. Sometimes you might be like, my mom's always telling me stuff. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. And you can get frustrated. Like, I mean, why do you always got to say this? But I want you to realize there's a reason for it because even our father, our father, all of us have one of the same fathers, which Adam Adi Salaam, where he was tempted by Iblis. Right? He's like, I want you to eat something. Right? 
And it wasn't like, oh, look at this, Adam al Islam, look at the biryani, look at the makluba. It wasn't about that. It was all about, hey, if you eat this, if you eat this, that you might be, what? That something major, uh, that if you eat this, that you can live forever like angels. So you tricked them. So we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will trick our individuals. So I think one of the uh, individuals, you might have your audio on, and we can hear you reciting Quran, which is awesome, mashallah. But just kind of give you guys a heads up. So one person might be having your audio not on mute, so it's heads up. All right, and we're going to go to the next slide. For young ones, so we're going to have a q and I'm just going to take the first 20, 30 minutes just to kind of talk about a few things. But after that, I want you guys to ask any questions. So why is this so important? So now we told you that Allah, Allah SWT tells us that, hey, you know what? We're going to be challenged. Your parents, now you know why your parents might be worried because Allah tells us that even prophets' kids could be tested. Then we know that Iblis is also making sure, trying to make us not do the right things. So we got to watch out for that. So but at the same time, we realize that, you know why we get worried about who you hang out with, what the friends you have. I want you guys to realize why is that? Because even research shows, you know how you guys learn? Here's a slide that tells you how some of you guys retain information, our whole information. Some of you guys, if you just read a book, you might remember everything, right? But not everyone always just by reading can understand something. 20% is what they hear, 30% is what they see. So what you young ones, what you see and hear is so important. 50% of how you think of things is what you see and hear. So it's so important for you guys to be very, very careful of what you're seeing and hearing. Right? Is that things that you're seeing making you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is the things that you're seeing and hearing helping you become a better student in school? Is the things that you're seeing and hearing making you a better uh, a, a, a child for your parents? That what you're seeing and, he and hearing, is that making you a good citizen in society? What you're seeing and hearing, is it making you a better athlete? Right? Is, are what you're seeing and hearing you making you do stuff that's against Islam? Make, seeing and hearing things that may be saying some bad things that you shouldn't be saying is so important. And think about how 70% of the way you learn information sometimes, after you see and hear, you like to discuss. So who are you discussing with? Right? Who are the individuals who are giving you advice? That's some stuff that you need to realize because for you to be empowered, you need to make sure that you are doing, the people around you are, are empowering you are positive people. Because some people might be powering, giving you some power, but that negative, it might be negative power. It might be things that are not good to know, not like someone's like, hey, let me teach you a bad word in another language. Or some person's like, hey, come over there and tell that kid, go say you're, you're stupid. And go over to that individual and do that. That's not cool. Right? You don't want someone to kind of teach you some of those bad words or something that, or tell you to watch something you shouldn't watch or listen to a music that you shouldn't be listening to. Right? You want them to be like, hey, if you're going to listen to something good, it's got to be something like Native Dean or something halal or some Nasheed. Right? So what you want to make sure is that even the people that you're discussing with, it's so important. And so parents, it's also important, the friends that they hang out with, that you want them to have friends. Look, you have to have friends, young ones. I want you to realize all of us have friends, but you want to make sure the friends that you are hanging out with, the stuff that you're talking about, what you're talking about, what you're seeing, what you're hearing plays a big part. Because when you discuss and you see and hear, then also is what you experience. Because the same people you're with all the time, if they're like it's, you're hanging out and you're playing video games like uh, Minecraft and you're having a fun time playing Minecraft, like, yes, this is awesome. But at the same time you're playing Minecraft and you start realizing, hey, someone's like, hey, guess what? It's time to pray. Oh, just this wait. I'm not done yet. Are you playing NFL 2K or NFL, NBA 2 thing? And like, look, right now it's the fourth quarter, LeBron James against uh, uh, Stuffer and Curry. Why do we got to stop right now? That's where you got to realize and say, look, just pause it for a few minutes. Let's go pray. No, oh, no, let's not do that. So that's what you got to make sure, who are, what kind of friends that you're having experiencing. Because you need to make sure that you're confident of who you are. And the way you're going to be confident is the people around you are going to help you support and make you be proud of who you are. And that's why being a part of this MCNA, or later on when you get older, it might be a part of young Muslims, is awesome. Because these individuals will help you be kind of be confident of who you are. I want you guys to realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us to be some great individuals. He has given us the greatest person to learn from. Prophet Muhammad 
What do you guys have to say? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these opportunities and say, hey, I, if you want to see and hear something good, learn from our Prophet. You want to hear about something great, things that he's experienced, that you should experience, learn through our Prophet Sallallahu Because when you learn all these things, you're going to be talking to others and sharing is something that you want to make sure that you do and you do well. So now, what are some solutions? So now that you have an idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to go re, 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 I'm a teacher so I always have to review, that we know that Allah is going to test us. Our life is, might be, you know, when Allah decides it's going to be. Allah wants us to make sure we have fun and we learn and be successful people in this world. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also wants us to make sure we, we remember Him with all the success that we have. So we know that we, a lot of times the way we learn is what we see and hear and what we discuss and experience. So what do we learn in school? Who do we talk to? Who do we hang out with? What do you do online? Who are you talking to online? What are you seeing online? All those things are very, very important. And that's why it's so important for you guys to make sure. So here's some tips that I want you guys to think about for us to make sure that we get that, that, that what you call that superpower of Islam in our life. Right? So we're going to go ahead and do that. But uh, any questions anyone have right now that anyone wants to uh, have any questions as I, in a few minutes, let's go through to some solutions. And then we're going to go into Q&A. All right. Thanks for the salams. Anas, Damur, Yasin, Zainab. All right. For now, we're going to go ahead and we'll go from there. So the next slide. Oh, before we get to that side, I want to show you one more thing, like uh, how how it's so important. You know why? Like you guys are different ages. So some of you guys are eight to fourteen. So the first seven years, you guys were all like everything that your mama told you. Like you guys would love, and you would be like, "Mama, I did this in school. I did that in school. You're the greatest mama baba in the whole wide world." But why is it that well, some of you guys were in seventh grade, sixth grade, middle school? Like changes. Salam alaikum. You now become salams. How was your day? Good. What you do, nothing. How is school boring? Right? Things all change up. And so it's so important that we want to realize that your parents start getting worried, like, wait a minute. And it's so important that even our scholars are even like Ali Radi Lawan talks about the first seven years, yes, it's about love and affection, but seven to thirteen, that's when you got your tharbia. Whatever behavior habits you have between zero and ten play a big part. Play a big part. So that's why I, I want you guys to realize what you guys do and behave play such a big part. And, and how you are going to be when you later. So whatever habits you have until the age of 12 or 13, when you get older, those are going to come stay with you. So when your parents are telling you, like, Bet I don't do this. Hey, stop, like, stop, stop biting your nails. Hey, you know, you know, you're getting mad too quickly. Hey, you're not sharing. Because if you don't have those, if you don't work on those skill sets right now, that sharing, not getting angry, watching your mouth, you know, uh, uh, being kind, not backbiting, not looking at people mean, not gossiping, not not you know what you know uh, listening to music they shouldn't be listening to. And if you start having those habits yet now, later on those those they can, it's hard to stop. So that's why all these are very important. So these are some few things that we will try to do now. First and foremost, I want you guys to realize, everyone at school being religious does not mean you don't do good in school. You have to be the best at school. Academic excellence. I want you guys to know your A, B, C's, and one, two, threes, and the leaf batas, and the G, ha, ha's. So you need to make sure you guys do awesome in every aspect of the education. So, so with that, I want you guys to realize that is thing. So academics, taking time and making sure, reading and math, if there's areas you need, don't, you can't understand, you get the support to do that. That's one. Second thing, because I want you guys to realize nothing wrong making sure you want to get the nice car, clothes, all these things. But if you don't have spirituality or the dean, and that's what I'm trying to get at, then you could be the doctor, you could be the engineer, you could have a billion dollars. But if you don't have dean, then in the long run, we're just losers. So that's why you want to be the doctor, the engineer, the lawyer, the teacher, the sheikh, the mulana, uh, a mufti. 
you want to be whatever, but you want at the same time as you strive that even just being a religious person, you still got to keep on. If not, at least it's going to come after anyone. So you want to have spirituality. So what are some things we could do? First and foremost, I want you guys to realize is number one. You're going to try to do this. 25 minutes. What do you guys do in 25 minutes? What do some people do in 25 minutes? Someone give me some answers. What do you guys do for 25 minutes in a day? That you guys, some of you guys might play video games for 25 minutes. What do you think people do? All right, okay, you play video games. Thank you. So some of you guys might in 25 minutes just surf the net. 25 minutes, hang out. So 25 minutes and 24 hours. Is that a lot? No. So if Allah is saying, hey, enjoy, play your video games, have fun, play sports, do your schoolwork, do things which are Allah's mantas, it's okay, which is halal. Enjoy food, yummy, yummy food, halal, zabi hud, burgers. But 25 minutes praying salah, is Allah is asking for too much of 24 hours of your time? The person who's giving you the car, the toy, the clothes, your family, the food, the chip, everything that you enjoy, Allah's giving you, and Allah's only telling you, give me 25 minutes of the time for praying. Is that a lot? So the first thing we're all going to do, if you want in part, if you want to be strong, you've got to bring Salah in your life. You pray, I guarantee you, even if you can't feel it, don't worry. Even at this age, at 42 years old, there's sometimes I'm like, oh, focus, focus. At least he's going to try not to make you pray, so you still try, and just even for a few seconds, if you could focus, Allah gives you hasanat and Jannah money for it. And I want you guys to realize that you know how Allah SWT gives you so many ways to get into Jannah? Think about this. Do you think like only Salah? Do you know when you go to sleep? If you go to sleep on the right side, read your dua, have the sleeping dua, you read your khullah, the whole sleep, for eight hours, if you snore, saliva coming down, whatever, but you started off by saying those du'as, sleeping on the right side, you get hasanat for seven hours of sleep. Seven hours of sleep, hasanat, if you just by remembering, reading the khuls, surah fatiha, and so on and so forth. That's one. Second thing, walking out, when you walk into the bathroom, walking in with your left foot, and say, Allahumma azka bin khubsi wal khabais, you get hasanat walking into the bathroom. Two. Number three, look in the mirror and you just say, MashaAllah, as you look at yourself, you get hasanat. Four, you go to the bathroom and you sit down and go to the bathroom the way the Prophet told us to do. Use your left hand and stuff. You get hasanat going to the bathroom. You walk out the bathroom and with your right foot and say, Ghufranika, you get hasanat walking out of the bathroom. You go and go and you brush after you brush your teeth and you go downstairs and you are upstairs or whatever or go to the kitchen and you eat and start with your right hand and say Bismillah and if you know the dua and you can say that you get hasanat for eating every morsel. Take a Cheerios, scrunch it, like crush it, in all those little tiny spots for every one of those little tiny crumble, uh, small little bits. You get hasanat. You finish off and you drink your water with your right hand, you get hasanat. You clean up the dish and you put it in the sink and your mom gets all excited, you get hasanat. That's how beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about how you can get good deeds. You get in the car, you just walk out of your house, left foot, hasanat. Get in the car before, like, mama put the DVD on. You put your seatbelt on and you say the dua for the, the car, the whole drive, hasanat. That's right now sitting here listening to this talk, hasanat. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so many ways for us to get into Jannah. So many ways. He's thinking of ways for us to get Jannah. So I, you know, sometimes you think of Salah, but I just told you what you just do the first 40 minutes of your day and how many ways you get good deeds. Just the first 40 minutes, right? You wake up, all the stuff I just told you, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it. So that's number two. Number three, social interaction. It's so important about social interaction that we need to make sure that we are involved. The friends that we pick are very important. And us helping out the community and serving the people, Allah will always protect you. When Prophet 
when he got the way he, he was panicking. He didn't know what to happen to him. He was worried and he went to Aisha uh, uh, Khadija radiallahu anha. He went and said, cover me, cover me. I think something bad has happened to me. Maybe it's something really bad, like maybe possession or something. He was really worried. He thought he might have gone, something bad has happened to him, like crazy, something. And she made a comment to him. She goes, Allah will never disown you, O Prophet, to Prophet Muhammad. This is before he was a prophet. He's like, Allah will never disown you. Why? Because you do five things. He said, you always take care of your, your kin's relation, your, your family relations. You never. So one thing we can learn about social interactions, you first got to take care of your family. Be respectful to your friends, your cousins. Never take away that. The Prophet uh, reminds the Prophet some of the second thing, that you also took care of the poor and the destitute. Helping people who are less fortunate than you by donations, by collect, you know, uh, money collection, by donating your clothes, all those other ways, you get hasanat. And when you take care of Allah's creation, Allah will take care of you. So that's number two. Number three, uh, like uh, Allah talks about taking care of a guest. So if someone comes over your house, and you're like, ah, oh. <laughs> they're gonna take all my toys. They're gonna eat my food. And I have to, ah, oh. this person always comes and he makes it such a big mess. But you be respectful to the guest. Allah loves those individuals. So these are things that if you could take care of from that these social interactions, it could go really far. Number four, time. Time every day, every day you're getting closer and closer, right, to meeting our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we want to make sure that as you have fun, and I, that's why I want to just stress, Islam lets you have fun. It's okay. Enjoy, but you need to balance and say, how many hours? If you're doing four or five hours of play, can you at least give at least one hour to Allah? 25 minutes of Salah, 15 minutes of reading Quran, right, 15 minutes of reading Quran. Helping out interaction. And that's what you and the Sunnah Sawai. Trying to do small things the Prophet Sallallahu did. Using your right hand, walking with your right foot, putting on your clothes with your right. Right? All these small little things, so you get hasanat. So those are things that would go really far. So these small little things, if you could implement and put into your life, I guarantee you, you will see changes. Because there are going to be challenges that you will get. But the question is, like, the friends that you have are your biggest key. Because at 8 to 10, 12 years old, you guys are like, okay, I know. But why I'm trying to tell you this is because the Prophet Sassam gives us an example. I'm going to paraphrase it just to make it easy for you guys to understand. He, told, he said to the Sahabas, if you walk into a perfume store, how would you feel if you walk into a perfume store, right? When you walk into a perfume store, you smell, it smells good, you smell nice, you might take some of it, put it on yourself. I can perfume and say, hmm, this is really nice. At the same way, he gives an example of a, a blacksmith. That's like, you know, where back in the days they used to make swords. They used, it used to be in a dark, dark, hot place, and the fire would be going, and they would have to make the sword and melt the sword. And, and, then, and he goes, if you walked in there, how would you feel? It would be very hot. You could get dirty if you have white clothes on, right? If you try to, even if you don't try to use it, you might get some of it on you. And he goes, that's exactly how friends are. You might not be, if you're around friends who are doing good things, you're going to slowly get those good habits. So maybe if they're praying, you're going to start to pray. If they're saying good words, good things, you see good, seeing good things, you're going to start doing that. But at the same time, if you have friends who are saying some bad things, they say, check this out, look at this, don't need to pray, I don't care, don't respect your parents, not, like, why do we need to pray Salah, then that's a problem. So you got to look at what friends, right? Because in school you're going to have to, you're going to have non-Muslim friends. There's nothing wrong having non-Muslim friends, right? The catch you want to make sure is are those you can have respect. You need to respect everyone of every faith, just like you want people to respect Muslims. You need to respect others too. But what you have to realize is that there are certain friends that you want to be where there there are different kinds of levels of friends, and there are friends where they're they're your part of your life, your the people you take advice from people you hang out with constantly every single day, that's the people you want to you share your closest secrets, those are people you want to be like, who are these individuals who are going to advise you doing good things, are they going to invite, advise you doing something bad, right, and that's the key that you want to have, right, so they're going to be acquaintances, and they're going to be some good friends, and the good friends you got to be, because at this age, that's going to be your key, because that friends are going to help you with your academics to do well, those friends are going to be the ones, hey, do they do good in school, because then you're going to want to do good in school. Are they the also spirituality? Are they the ones who are, uh, you know, uh, trying to get closer to Allah? Then you'll do that. 
Are these the friends who are respectful to others or they're always making fun of other kids? Are they calling nicknames? Are they gossiping about others, right? Are they being cliquish? Because then those things are they're the problems that you're going to have if those friends are trying to tell you. Are those friends t using their time always about just always having fun, which is having fun is not a problem, but they're always having fun and not talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's a problem. Do these friends have sunnah swag where they always want to be like, hey, what did the Prophet do? What can we do to the Prophet? The way they act, the way they behave, the way they're trying to dress, trying to follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told our Prophet to do and you're trying to follow that, you guys will be awesome. So young ladies start practicing the deen and say, well, I'm going to now change my clothing because, you know, because that's what the Prophet saw some did. Boys try to make sure that, hey, I'm going to also dress properly and making sure that, hey, I, 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 I follow what the Prophet saw some told us to do. That stuff will go very far. So those were some things I want you. I've been talking for 30 minutes, but now I want you guys to ask me some questions, inshallah. So let's, bismillah, begin with any questions. I know a lot of you guys got schoolwork, so I will, we'll, we'll, we'll make it short. But any questions? I'm trying to make sure if I'm, am I seeing these now? Let's see. Let's, uh, should I answer? Oh, okay, I sorry, I see it now. Jazakallah khair, alaikum. What is this about? Okay, so one question is a good question. Uh, random question. Uh, I like to listen to music sometimes. Is it bad? So here's what I want you guys to think about. I want you to think about what kind of music are you listening to. So if you're listening to music like, okay, for example, like like Little Wayne or something like Rihanna, like some of these other pop where they're, the words are like cuss words, they're saying bad things, they're all about love or disrespecting women or disrespecting others and stuff like that, that's not cool. But if you're listening to stuff that reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Native Dean, Meher Zain and stuff like that, I want you just to have that. I don't want you to go to go right now. So I, no one, I'm not going to go into the haram halal issue. I'm just going to say whatever music you're listening to, you got to listen. To make sure what are the words, what are what's the message, what's the video. Because some of those are, these songs are really bad, but then they have bad videos also. So that's what you want to make sure uh, it, it plays. Uh, you know, it's very important. Uh, and, and so like you know, so sometimes like Muslim raps, like one of the persons asked about Muslim raps. So Native Dean's one of the groups. So there are some individuals. Who um, could you know um, you know are, are things out there? So make sure you just run through your parents. But so uh, yeah, you know, use spoken word rhymes. You know, these are good things that, in the sense of, I want you to make sure that yeah, Islam gives you an opportunity to listen to things, but it has to be the proper words and stuff, right? And then you know, having percussions is really you know also plays a big part. But right now, I don't want to get into that that whole instrument issue. But I want you to first think about the words that you're listening to, young ones. So important because that could that could change because what you listen to in here, as I told you, could change your mentality and ideas and thoughts. So that's why it's very important. Can we make friends that are not Muslim but they are good? Yes, you can make friends at school. Like I had friends too, but and and and, and you know and then you know they're, they're they're at school. They do good in school. They're being respectful to others. Not a problem. The catch you want to just make sure through time that as you get closer and closer, you got to make sure that there are some boundaries and rules that we have. And that's where you want to just keep in mind. But having non-Muslim friends is nothing wrong with it, right? It's just keeping and making sure that the boundaries and an understanding of, of the limitations and rules that we have, as long as they're letting you practice your faith and then not being making fun of, there's nothing wrong. I grew up here in the Chicago public schools. I had friends who were there, but then maybe I didn't go, always go to their house. I mean, I hung out with them at school, but you know, my closest closest friends were individuals who were Muslim because they understood some of the other dynamics and culture of our faith. Um, let's see here. Um, okay, so if, yeah, if they, if you know, kids, kids you have, uh, if they go to school, that's not a problem. You know, we got kids who are, um, okay, you know, TV, good question. Like, reading is good. Watching TV. Look, there are some things, but there are some TV shows I want you guys to like. Cartoon Network after 9 o'clock is not good. Family Guy, don't like it. You even SpongeBob SquarePants. Ugh. Parents, I'm going to tell you again. There are some goods and bads, but I want you guys to look at a website for any movie that you guys watch. I want you guys to look at KidsInMind.com. Parents, if you're listening, KidsInMind.com is huge. I want you guys to go and check that out. 
and that will play a big thing. Uh, and, and in that way, it could, um, it could go uh, very, you know, uh, big. So um, now, uh, okay, let's go. Going downstairs, subhanAllah, going upstairs, Allahu Akbar. Yeah, yeah you, you know, that's another thing you could do. When you're going downstairs by saying subhanAllah, good hasanat, going upstairs saying Allahu Akbar, jazakallah khair for that. Let me, just, let me get these questions a little higher. So, oh, now I can see a lot more. Okay, why is it called Sunnah Swag? Uh, sunnah swag is uh, really good. It's just a, it's just another term, right? You know, sunnah is just the thing. I'm just kind of using it in a different way. It's kind of a lot of times in, in 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 right now in the generation they call it you got swag it means you just got some style. So I'm saying, hey, you can have style, but just make it sunnah style. So that's what it is. How can we make sure that we are portraying ourselves as good Muslims? You know, um, one of the big things is kind of making sure that as right now the way we act is the biggest thing. If someone at school knows that, look. They do good in school. Hey, well, they're always being nice to people. They never, you know, make fun of individuals. And that was very po easy for me at school. And a lot of times, when, you know, I played sports, but I always try to look out for the person, you know, the prophet says something. I always looked out for the people who are maybe are, or less fortunate, are, are not even less fortunate, but maybe they didn't have the popularity, but you're trying to make it easy for them. You get good hasanat and good things for that. So that plays a big part. You know, if, it, what if, another question was, if you want to, you know, I'm just saying a bad word, you make up a word. So they said, you know, someone, if you make it something like, I remember when I played sports, sometimes I, I didn't want to say a bad word, I made up a word. You could, it's good to make up a word, like chicken. I used to say, if, if things don't go up, like, ah, oh, chicken. I know sometimes it's good to say stuff for Allah, but sometimes when you're playing with some guys, like, what did you just say? So sometimes, you, yeah, it's good to make up other words that it's not a bad word if you know that you want to just be like, ah, oh, frustrated. So I used to say, ah, oh, chicken. <laughs> so I know someone, you know, some gave, people gave some different words here. So, yeah, but also it's it's good when you see something bad, say astaghfirullah, you see something good, alhamdulillah, that's always better. But, you know, if you need to make up another word for, a, 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 yeah, better not to say the bad word. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala realizes that you're trying to catch yourself. You get hasanat for thinking of something but don't doing it, you get hasanat for not doing it. So alhamdulillah. Why if you don't have any good people in your society to make friends with? That's why being part of stuff like MCNA, YM, and others, you got to find some individuals. There's always going to be some people. You just got to move around. And, 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 and find people. Just like if you like sports or, an art, or, or, or archery or arts or anything else, you would go and join that club and find out someone who likes that same thing. You need to find the same thing. Uh, can we ask questions uh, regarding outside this topic? Yes, not a problem. Dean Squad, hey, thanks. That's another group that could. What do you do if Muslim classmates bully and make fun of non Muslims? Um, we're going to talk about that in the next month. So they asked me, to, we'll kind of talk about the bullying next time. That will be a topic separate one that we're going to go ahead and do. Is making money off uh, of music haram. Making money off music, okay, if you're, sell, if you're selling haram music, then yeah, just like selling uh, haram, uh, uh, like alcohol and stuff. Like if, some, if there's some, like, you know, I don't know what, if the music, if there's something like haram music and it's like videos are bad and you're selling those videos, Yes, like if some people have stores, just like if someone has a store and selling alcohol, if you can't drink it, you can't sell it, right? So if you can't do it yourself, you're not supposed to tell others to do it and make money off of it. So no, yes, making a haram music, a video, and trying to make money off it and say, well, I'm not, I'm just selling it to others, that's not cool. Avoid Hollywood movies, crazy in teens, yes, yeah. Uh, Hollywood movies, um, sometimes, you know, like some of these shows, again, you know, Netflix is a great way where you could parents, you could pick which shows they are, movies. Sometimes, but you got to be careful because a lot of times these people are showing things that are not good for you. It's cool. The girl doesn't uh, did something she was not supposed to. Okay, okay. Let me see here. Minecraft, cool. Uh, it's just a game. How can we offer us our prayers or pray in school time if there's no arrangements? You got to speak to the schools. They're, they'll let you do that. Sometimes they'll let you use your lunch time and do that. If you if you need help, you could get their the summer school. Uh, massages to do that. If your massage is not able to, if you speak to the sister, uh, Saima, she could get, get, get contact with us. We'll go ahead and do, um, we'll help you out on how to make that happen. All right? Because there is a, a way for you guys to pray in Salah. You sometimes have to work with their schedule, but even Juma prayers and stuff now in Chicago has quite a bit of places, so that is possible to do. If I do something that is seemingly good, but my parents are still not satisfied with it, um, you know, uh, so it, it's, it's you, you know, look, your parents might have some expectations. You're going to try your best to make, you know, you, when you have the intention to make your parents happy, you get hasanat also. As long as they make you tell you to do some halal, you know, good things. So, you know, parents are sometimes tough. I remember my dad like, hey, hey, why did you get that B? What is that? B means bad. 
So you're like, what? All right, so, so you got to keep that in mind. Another question, my parents can be overprotective and don't give me space. Okay, I know that gets kind of tough. I know they don't mean to, but then sometimes they're trying to figure out what's going on and they don't know. So you got to tell them what's going on. And sometimes if you're more independent and quietly not sharing stuff, especially if you guys got those phones and just always on there on the computers all the time, like, what are you doing? Oh, don't worry, Mama, you don't know. That's when people get worried. There's a kid in my class, and she's sometimes mean and sometimes nice. I don't know if she, she, I should be her friend. I think it's good. You want to forget if she's hurting your feelings and stuff, you, you want to be respectful, but you don't have to hang out with them all the time. So you want to kind of get a, a feel. If there's other people you could talk to who feel, you feel more comfortable with, go ahead and do that. But you don't want to be disrespectful. Sometimes people might not mean it, so you got to see if you could explain yourself and say, this is how I'm feeling, and see if you could get there. Um, Emma, the eight years old, asking what is your social, what is social interaction? Social interaction is just kind of meeting with just people you hang out with, your friends that you're meeting with. That's what we're talking about. Like you know, so making sure that you're respectful to your friends, people who maybe are let you know who are struggling, helping them out, people who are older than you, respecting them, people who are non-Muslims, responding to, uh, with them is also important. Emma, the eight years old, what kind of kid channels you said about? Oh, kids in mind. Uh, kidsinmind.com. It's great. I have a lot of friends, but they are good friends, this, um, uh, which is good. Should I? Avoid, uh, I have a lot of bad friends, but they are good friends. Yeah, if they're if they're bad friends, but they're good friends, that you. But the problem is they're taking you away from a lost month out. That's a problem, right? And that's why you want to. You could still be a hey, how you doing? But you got to separate yourself because if not, through time, they're, as you get older and older, they're going to tell you to do things that are not. But they might be good, but they're only doing, maybe they're just taking advantage of you. So you got to be very careful about that. All right, young man? Uh, I want to play the piano for my own relaxation. Is it haram? I'm not a scholar, so I'm not going to discuss that. But you could speak to your mom or dad about that. Uh, there are some scholars regarding um, some of those piano instruments where there are some scholars that say no, uh, that, that it is uh, unacceptable. But I will ask you to speak to your scholar in your area because I do not want to talk about picky matters in that. Uh, how kids can overcome their annoyed feelings or anger? Uh, the kids, uh, I think it's very important that uh, you know if you got if you have sometimes you get annoyed. Look, it's you are going. To, there are times you're going to get mad. Being mad is sometimes okay to be mad, right? The, the part of being mad is not that are you dis, when you're getting mad do you disrespect people? Do you hurt people? Do you physically hurt people or do you verbally hurt people? That's the issue. People are always going to get mad. So there's nothing wrong with being mad. It's just the way and the way you respond. So if you know your person gets mad and might say something really wrong, that's when you, the, the prophet said, if you're, getting, if you're arguing, sit down. If you can't sit down, then lie down. Because it's hard to lie, argue with someone when you're lying down. If that, walk out the room. So that's the key that we want to make sure. Is shut up bad to say yes? It's not good to, you know, because you're telling someone, like, you're talking like shut up. You know, better, it's better to just say, hey, you know, can you stay, you know, can you be quiet right now or, you know, right now? Uh, you know, I need you to uh, sh uh, shut the, you know, uh, 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 you know, can you quiet down, quiet down, that's better than saying shut up. Let's say that you're not making, uh, not making haram videos or dealing in any haram, just, uh, just doing halal music, like a producer, electronic music artist, uh, dubka, trap, glitch hop, okay, I don't know all that detail, is that halal, I would say speak to your scholar in your area, but I would say is if you're just doing some halal, like, you know, rhymes or spoken word, that's cool. That's cool, and you know, and we need some sometimes artists on the side who could do that. Like a lot of Muslim artists that do that on the side. So if you're thinking of like halal ways to kind of promote the deen or, or, or doing the sheets or not or praising the prophet, or praising Allah, or saying good words, nothing wrong with it. It's kind of cool. We would need more and more individuals to kind of showcase those talents. You know, uh, how do I not be so shy and introverted? Hey, uh, being uh, shy, there's nothing wrong with it. The catch is that, yeah, there are certain times you need to speak up. And us Muslims, we need to speak up, we, especially when something's not there. You want to be confident of who you are. We are blessed by Allah SWT. We uh, are just Americans like anyone else and Muslims. Yes, I know like next, next uh, month they want me to talk about bullying. We're going to talk about a little bit more challenging. But I want you to realize it is okay to be Muslim American, right? Where you could still dress, you know, like you know, hey, have your pants, shirt, whatever, like everyone else is wearing. But we have some parameters, right? Making it loose, you know, um, making sure that we're following a proper uh, proper commandments. But at the same time, it's there. So being uh, shy, you know, like it, you know, there are some skill sets that you could do. Maybe closer with close friends, you need to start talking a little bit more. You know, getting out of your box, 
giving uh, opportunity to maybe try to your best to be like, okay, I'm going to try to inter go and meet one new person, uh, you know, in a week at the school. So get out of your normal two, three people you hang out with and talk to someone else. Maybe do like a talk at the mudget or at the school or something. Or, and, you know, we have at our school where they, everyone has to do a speech before they graduate. So this gives them an opportunity to go ahead and talk or they have to go talk in morning assembly. So that could be done. How do you control anger problems? We just kind of talked about that, you know, four or five things you could do. Uh, academic excellence is just making sure that you do good in school. Do your best and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of the rest. Um, uh, how can I balance my homework which takes a, a, almost my whole day with things? Yeah, you know, that, that you know, and I think that's where you want to go with uh, like Quran, Islam, or things like that. So, look, even if you take five, ten minutes, you, I guarantee you have ten minutes to do even reading Quran. Even if you just take ten to fifteen minutes of reading Quran, Maybe another five ten minutes of memorizing. It take thirty minutes. I think you could block that time off. And then, you know, I told you about all these other things when you're walking, just saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, remembering Allah, making those duas. Those are all ways of doing hasanat, right? So that's amazing. Small things that you're just doing. You're teaching, you know, you're smiling, hasanat, good deeds. So these are all other ways you could get uh, uh, stuff. Another question: My parents can be overprotective and don't give me space. Uh, how can I let them know that I, I want to be more independent? How can I? Yeah, you know, it's good to talk to your parents. Like, hey, mommy, I want, I want to, I respect you. I want to tell me, you know, hey, I want, I want to respect you. I want to do things, but there are certain things. Can I get more time? But you have to explain them why, because if you don't show them and tell them why, then they they get worried because you don't know what that is. So it's very important. How do you create love of Allah, of Salah and teen? It's a big issue now. Yeah, you know, I think. Uh, so a lot of the guys, young ones, I need you guys to at least at least pay your fart. Your minimum you have to do is fart. And I, I know sometimes you guys say, well, I don't feel it. Don't worry about feeling. When you first exercise, are you? if someone is a marathon runner, the first time they run the first mile ever, it's not easy. They build. It takes them two, three years, to, you know, a year for someone to become a, a, a bodybuilder, two, three years to be a bodybuilder, a sports athlete. They spend more than 10,000 hours. There are moments that you're not going to always enjoy it, it's, but though after you get more and more, you start loving it, and you can't stop doing it, and that's the key. <clears throat> but even as adults, it's challenging. But the catch is I don't want you to be like, oh, if I'm not feeling, I'm not going to do it. you got to work on it. Just like in a subject that you're not good at, you go work at it, work at it, you get better at it. It might never be excellent, but the, Allah is so merciful that even if for a few seconds you can focus, Allah will reward you. That's how beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. How do we prevent gay people? Uh, because I heard it was uh, genetic. No, look, okay. Uh, oh, gay and lesbian. Look, the act is haram. Is by having, you know, you know, you know, if someone's going through that thing, you make dua for them. You make it easy. You know, you, you know, um, if they have those feelings, they can have feelings. Uh, but again, those are just a test, like anyone else who might be like wants to drink alcohol, and that's their test. So someone wants to be with the opposite gender, that's their test. Someone has an anger issue and they don't know how to stop it. They, they, some people have a habit of stealing. So those are habits and are challenge, are something that they might be going through and they, they have to go through it. And Allah SWT, you have to be patient and they're going to work on it. So feelings is nothing wrong with when they have, in this, especially in this LBGT thing. But the idea of acting on it is completely haram. There's no, no, there's no way to justify it. But, but as someone's going through it, you, make it, you, you, got, you get them right scholar or right friend to help them go through that situation. All right, you know, uh, don't just, uh, you know, you can't, you don't, you always give people hope. You don't just say, you know, you're, you're going to help. No one knows where they're going, but we try our best to, you know, get, get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Is it okay for kids to have their own phones? I'm a big believer. No kids, kids, especially. There's no need for you guys to have a phone. If you do, just get a flip phone because at home, at school, they'll call you if something's wrong. At home, you can use the internet or the Wi-Fi, your iPad. Why do you need a phone? There's so much fitna in that phone, and you, your friends share things that shouldn't be sharing, these videos, these pictures. So I'm a big believer. No phones. I know you kids are going to hate me right now, but sorry. I have a middle school kid. They don't use a phone. Uh, what should I do if your kids are hanging out with, uh, are saying rude, rude words? So you got to make sure. You know, with you, you got some friends. If you feel you could tell them, hey guys, you gotta stop saying these words. You gotta sometimes speak up. You know, like in bullying, even when someone's saying some bad things, like sometimes you gotta be the one to step up and say, hey guys, you not make fun of them, because in that way, if something happens to you, then people are like, oh, this person stepped up. So it's not always like when something's bad happening to us. If we know that something bad's happening to someone else, we need to step up and you know, stop that from happening.
me and my friends swear a lot, and I'm I'm not proud of it. If you could give any suggestions, so using uh you know thank you uh, for being so honest. Uh, so I just want to tell you, young lady, uh, or, or, I mean uh, individual, uh, uh, that hey, just make sure that uh you know work on it. And and one of the big things is going to say use make up words, right? So if you're using the bad word like make up like you know, I told you like like um uh, pumpkin, right? Just make up a food like. You know, you know, and that way, that could be your new word when something's aggravating you, right? So if, and then you know, and if you can't use the stuff a lot, but just make up something else. Uh, okay, you know, when the kids asking, can you can we play games like football? Muslims can play any sport as long as it's not like you know, uh, you know. But again, football, your parents might not be happy with it, right? But there are some sports like if you know that could be dangerous, like you know, like boxing and stuff. I really highly. You know, anything has anything can be dangerous if you do for many years. So you just got to be very careful. So sports are great. I love sports. I think sports, boys and girls should all play sports or be a part of any club activity, like you know, debate club or any other club. Uh, uh, everyone should be part of something. I think it's great. It builds talent, learns how to skill sets, take away from your shyness and so on and so forth because you work with others who are also have a passion for something. So my question is about guidance. What does Allah choose to guide people about other and others. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides all of us, right? We strive and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what to do. It's up for us to make that decision. But there are some people like even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Iblis a chance, but when Iblis was arrogant, so that's the problem is Allah will guide anyone as long as he doesn't get arrogant. So Allah said, hey, don't do this, but he was like, I don't care. So Allah will give us opportunities. That's why we have free will. We make the choice. Allah gives us in front of us this opportunity. We got to make the right choice, and then He gives us guidance of how to, what's the best for us. So we just have to make sure that we uh, have that. So Allah will guide some individuals, and then some people, and then after a while, Allah's favor will not be there. And so you know, I gave you chance after chance. He Prophet knew was making dua, dua, come on, Allah, Allah, and finally he said, Allah said, no more. I can't guide him. He made he made his decision. So there, Allah will never close the door on anyone. You give a, a chance. Adam alayhi salam made a mistake. He said, Allah, so as long as you keep on asking Allah, please forgive me, please forgive me, that's it. When people are like, I, I don't think, you, you never lose hope and say, Allah will not forgive me, forget it. Right when you do that, that's arrogance. Because Allah says, I is forgiving. So as long as you keep on asking Allah for help, Allah will keep on guiding you. I guarantee it. Don't lose hope. How kids control their fast. Uh, uh, oh boy, man, we got so many questions. Okay. Uh, I think we're going over time here. Yes. Uh, these next uh, three minutes here. Uh, it's okay Can for a 14 year old. I'm sorry, go ahead. Brother, yeah, yes. sorry. I know that you needed to go somewhere, and mashallah, the questions are pouring in. So, what we're going to do is we are going, inshallah, we, we are inviting you back. So, we will discuss a few days in February. And as you can tell, the, the, you know, our attendees, our audience have lots and lots of questions. And of course, um, I see a question I'm being bullied. So, inshallah, that will be your segue into our next month's topic. Can and I answer four, I'm gonna, yeah, can I answer just four quick questions? I see which I really want to answer. Okay. Uh, Grand, 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 Grand Theft Auto. No. And yeah, it's not a good game. I don't like it. There's bad words in there. You're doing bad things in there. And it's, it's completely against our deen. It's a rated M for mature. Rated M does not mean mashallah, mubarak, Muslim. It means mature, 18 and over. So, no, you should not play that game. Call of Duty, some of the shooting games here and there, but some of these shooting games are killing Muslim people. I don't like some of those games where there's just like your Muslim, uh, your, your army, and you're going and attacking countries like Pakistan and Afghanistan and stuff. Not cool. Uh, and can you drink non alcohol beer? Like you don't want to get close to stuff like, like that. I don't know the whole non alcohol beer. I don't know if there's some percentage of it, so I don't know too much about that. But I would tell you guys best to stay away from things that look like it too. If it, I mean, if there's no, like, if it's non-alcoholic, there's no alcohol in it, but I, I don't know too much about that whole non-alcohol beer thing, but I would tell you, hey, just be careful. If it's something that it doesn't have wine or an intoxicant, I mean, or alcohol, then, you know, but I, I don't know what this whole non-alcohol, so I'm going to skip that, young lady. I don't know too much about that. Um, if you have compulsory music class in your school, if it's like, you know, uh, this, like, information about the Beethoven stuff, and there's other instruments. If you could get a, if you could get option to get out of it, that's fine. If not, speak to whatever your parents feel. I'm not a scholar, so I don't want to get into a matters because I might have a different view than some of your parents. So I don't want to jump into that. 
and I think those were the other ones. Jazakallah khair, may Allah bless you guys, love you guys, make dua for me. If you can remember this one thing, uh, 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 you make dua for my three kids and my wife, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and protect us, and then you guys ask forgiveness if I said anything wrong. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But you guys keep up, and may Allah bless you, respect your parents. Sometimes it might get annoying, but tell, uh, trust me, they mean well. So Allah bless all of you guys, love you guys. Remember a tall Indian guy and just saying, Ya Allah, you know, this guy was somewhat crazy maybe. But Allah <laughs> bless him, give him Jannah, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Can you, brother, end with du'a, please? Short du'a? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki wa madini. Yaakin abudu wa yaakin astayin. Idina surat al-mustaqim. Asurat al-lazina. Alamit alayhim. Ghani matubi alayhim. Al-Dalim. Ameen. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are al-Muhaymin, the protector. You ask that we, you protect all of us young ones, our parents, our community members, our elders. And Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Khafur, the forgiver. We ask that you forgive us for things that we've done in the past, that we've done in the present, that we might do in the future. Forgive us for what we done to our, what we said to our parents, what we said to our friends, what we said to our others, to our community members, to Muslims and non-Muslims. And Ya Allah SWT, you are Hadi, the guide that we ask that you guide us to be the best in this world, to have all the things that we want in this world, but also guide us so we could be in Jannah with our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair, Jazakallah khair, Brother Habib. Inshallah, we'll see you next month. Um, you may definitely leave. I know you had requested to leave much earlier. Jazakallah khair. The rest of the audience, Jazakallah khair. I, uh, your questions are very inspiring. And we have made a note that there are certain topics that you seem to be leaning to.